In this tutorial, we will demonstrate how email works, looking at what happens when John wants to send an email message to Linda. This is not a technical description and some details will be simplified for clarity. John uses an email client such as Outlook Express, Outlook, Eudora, and Lotus, just to name a few. The user may also use a web-based email client such as World Client. Once John has completed the message, specifying Linda's address and has hit the Send button, his client connects to the mail server using the SMTP protocol and transfers the message. The message is now stored on the server that first has to understand where to send it in order for Linda to receive it. In other words, it has to find out the address of the mail server handling Linda's domain, otherdomain.com. To do that, it connects to a DNS server and performs a query to find the MX record of Linda's domain. John's mail server is now able to connect to the remote mail server and to forward the message using the SMTP protocol. The remote mail server does the necessary processing and then places the message in Linda's mailbox. Linda, using her email client, will connect to the mail server to check if there are any messages. The protocol used to receive email can be either POP or IMAP. In this case, she'll find John's message, will download it, and then will be able to read it. The simple mail transfer protocol, as the name implies, is used to transfer email messages. It is used to transfer messages from client to server and from server to server. The host that initiates the session will connect to the recipient's SMTP server in almost all cases on port 25. The SMTP session begins with an HELO command, which is basically an introduction. The string following HELO in server-to-server -server communication is usually the name of the sender's domain. If the host opening the connection is an email client, the string is usually the computer name. Other commands follow. The sender of the message, the recipient or recipients, and the contents of the email message. The quit command ends the session. The SMTP server has now received the message and is ready to process it. It is important to remember that SMTP is not an authenticated protocol. Unless specific configurations have been carried out, anyone can connect to an SMTP server and send an email no matter who the recipient is. We will discuss how to configure mDaemon so that it is not an open relay in another e-learning session. SMTP was extended and a new protocol was born, eSMTP. Using eSMTP, sessions can be authenticated. The first command of an eSMTP session is an eHLO string. The server replies with the list of supported authentications. The client chooses one. It authenticates, then data transfer begins. eSMTP also supports ETRN and ATRN commands. Using these commands, a mail server can request another mail server to retrieve a collection of messages. These commands will be discussed in the e-learning session that covers DQ. We have seen that both POP and IMAP can be used to receive email. Let us now briefly explain the differences between the two protocols. Once again, this is not a technical description and some details will be simplified. The Post Office Protocol is the oldest widely used internet mail delivery agent. It is the most popular and also the simplest to configure. POP downloads the message and stores it on the disk of the client, deleting it from the server. Messages can be organized in folders and subfolders, but this takes place on the client. Recent versions of POP allow you to leave messages on the server as well. It is important to note that each client can download the message only once and that it has no ability to operate on the server. The Internet Message Access Protocol, or IMAP, downloads a copy of the message to the client only to let the user read the message. The message is actually stored on the server, and, most importantly, the user can manipulate both messages and mailboxes on the server. Server-side mailboxes can be added, nested, renamed, moved, and deleted. Messages can be freely deleted or copied and moved between mailboxes. Having the messages on the server has several advantages. First, the server's hard drive is more likely to be backed up on a regular basis. Second, it is possible for the user to access his or her messages from different clients, leaving them on the server in an organized folder structure. And finally, it is possible to have shared access to a folder. In other words, 
John can put some of his messages into a folder that George can access as well, with permissions such as read-only configured accordingly. mDaemon supports POP in the standard version, and it supports both POP and IMAP in the Pro version and BlackBerry edition. This concludes this e-learning overview on how email works.